Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week called The Last Movie Star. It's the latest film from writer and director Adam Ripkin. He's been best known for writing and, and directing films such as uh, The Troy Rock City, The Dark Backward. He also worked on some writing credits for movies like Mouse Hunt and Small Soldiers, which is already celebrating its 20th anniversary. Yeah. This time it's a film where he plays a, a homage to a Hollywood icon, a living legend by the name of Burt Reynolds, who's been best known for films such as Deliverance, The Longest Yard, yeah, the original. He also did the remake as well, as well as the, the Smokey and the Bandit movies had a cameo in, in the third film. Uh, the Cannibal Run films, the yeah, first two, and many others that he's done in his entire career. He's also been known for his uh, TV show uh, called Gunsmoke, yeah, which was the longest running Western series. And this is a movie about um, him basically playing himself, but only with a different character name uh, that's based on his character from Smoking the Bandit named Big Edwards, where he, he wants up getting a lifetime achievement award somewhere in Nashville after he's being attended at a film festival but he wants up um, being escorted by a, a cold-hearted um, young girl who's actually taking him for a ride but it leads to you know fame and aging that sort of thing so anyway the movie stars Burt Reynolds Ariel Winter best known for her role in the TV series Modern Family uh, Clark Duke yeah from uh, Hot Tub Time Machine and many others he's been in. Chevy Chase, uh, also from Hot Tub Time Machine, but also been in, in several comedies in his entire career. And of course, Saturday Night Live. Elard Cauldron, Al J. Lee Knox, uh, Macy Reitner, uh, Justin Street, Jenna Sims, Kennedy Summers, And Nikki Blonsky, yeah, hard to believe, the same actress who's been best known for the movie Hairspray from 2007, yeah, the remake of the 1988 John Waters classic. And it's written and directed by Anna Ricken. The movie begins when we meet a former superstar named Bick Edwards, who's played by Burt Reynolds, you know, best known for all of the films in his entire career. Unfortunately, he's getting really old. He's, a, he's aging very rapidly. And on top of that, uh, he has a dog named Squanto, which is named after one of his films. But unfortunately, he's not looking very well. And because of that, um, he had to take him away to a vet. So now he's all alone without a dog, so he's just going around shopping, you know, getting some food, and he's trying to check to see what's going on, so on and so forth. You know, just, you know, just spending time just being completely lonely. That is until he receives um, an envelope for, for the Nashville's International Film Festival that he's invited to attend. So, he gets an advice by his friend Sony, who's played by Chevy Chase, to convince him to make the trip and accept the honor, mostly because, you know, other actors had appeared uh, in the festival, like Robert De Niro, uh, Clint Eastwood, and even Jack Nicholson. So, he didn't want to do it at first because he thought this whole thing was would probably um, 
ruin his chance of his entire career, so. But then, he figured, what the hell. So he arrived at Nashville, and he was hoping that things were going to go well for him, but unfortunately, it wasn't exactly what he hoped for. When we meet uh, a girl named Lil, who's played by Ariel Winter, actually shows up in a beat-up compact car, and she's dressed up in very skimpy clothing, and she's trying to look more you know, sexy in that way. But she's like, but she's like a punk type. Anyway, he takes uh, Vic inside a a local hotel, which isn't exactly as fancy as he may expect it. It was just a small room, you know, with a TV and, and a bed, and it doesn't smell right. So he was hoping that it was going to be for the better, but that wasn't the case. And then he begins to find out that the festival is being held inside a dive bar. Yeah, that's in that's that's in the city of Nashville. So the festival is being run by Doug and Shane, both played by Clark Duke and L.A. Cauldron. So they actually fooled Bick into actually uh, watching all these. Uh, films of his that he's done and he's being accepted for for a lifetime achievement award but Bick eventually feels like you know it just doesn't seem like an actual festival that he was hoping for so things started to go a bit rough for him because he started uh, getting some whiskey he was feeling very drunk having a drink along with uh, you know Lil you know, just talking about their problems that they're going for, mostly because Lil has a boyfriend who's a, a complete jerk, to be exact. Yeah, I know, they, they've been going really roughly, and because apparently uh, Vic is just having hard times already in his life. I mean, he's making all these big mistakes, you know, he's becoming so bitter and cold-hearted. So I guess in between, you know, now we begin to see the difference between young and old here. So it didn't seem to turn out quite as expected for the festival because apparently, you know, he just left after they were watching a screening of all of his earlier films. And he was just at a local supermarket, you know, already drunk and he's just riding on on a horse. And, and then this is where he he just got so bitter, um, <laughs> Stark waving mad, and just he just goes around, you know, telling them that this whole thing is a joke, it's a setup, and even worse, I mean, he went back to his hotel, and he actually froze uh, Stewart's uh, camera, who happens to film all of this with the Q and A's and everything. Just threw the camera all the way outside and actually landed straight into Lil's car. So, yeah. So that didn't work out. But anyway, Doug and, and Shane decided to to have him back again so the next day to see how this will turn out. Maybe they'll they'll try to see if they'll find a way to regain his conscience here. Yeah, and that's how that turned out too. When you know he was going back, and you know, he was trying to, he was like looking outside, you know, spotting some young woman around, like he was going to take Viagra and be able to have sex, but yeah, just causing him to have some hallucinations and knocks himself uh, when he when he fell all the way down into the TV set and bumped his head. So the next morning, um, Lil just came by um, just to pick up um, Vic, but then just so they can get ready to to do another take and maybe just film something uh, with Doug and and Shane along with Stewart you know, as the cameraman. Well, anyway, that didn't seem to work out as it seems because now. Uh, 
Bix's plan was to go all the way straight to Knoxville. I mean, he wanted to go back to the airport so he can go back home at first, but then he decided, you know, he wants to go, he just wants to go down to a trip to Memory Lane right there, so this is where he's going back to his childhood days, at, you know, such as his old house, uh, a football stadium, and in the city where he actually he made a proposal to his first wife, who his first wife is now being sent to at a retirement home, yeah, because she is getting old and she has Alzheimer's. Before he gets to see uh, his first love again, since now all of his other lovers uh, either, either had died or got divorced, you know, things were not working out as years follow. He had to stay at a hotel, a very luxury hotel, um, you know, with uh, Lil, so that way he'll be able to wait for the next morning to to meet her. So they're just spending time, you know, having fun. While Lil is just looking up on her phone, just you know, going around, uh, watching you know TV, just looking back at Vic's um, profile on. IMDB and also uh, so watching some of his clips that he did on the Johnny Carson show and all that. Yeah. But then we begin to find out that since he took pictures with him at the hotel, uh, he found out on her Instagram that that her boyfriend's uh, former ex-girlfriend started to uh, like the pictures and and all that, and that's what leads to a lot of trouble. When he finally uh, went to the retirement home, that's when uh, he finally gets to uh, to meet uh, his first love and gets to talk to her and I'll be able to spend time for a while before he can finally get to go back to the film festival that he's attended. So now he gets to have his Lifetime Achievement Award and have the Q&A that, that they had all planned. So now it turns out to be a lot better. So changes his ways. So. Things are going great for the better. So that's what the film's about. And it's basically what the film is about a former star who's trying to go back to his past lives, you know, where he made all these uh, terrible mistakes and he's trying to recuperate from them. And that's just what it's about. I mean, even though, yes, he was bitter, he was cold hearted and everything. And that also led to um, to Lil too. I mean, yeah, because she felt that she's basically the same way. Also, I mean, she also had to take a lot of <laughs> a lot of medicine, you know, just to get past her pain that she's been going through. Yeah. Um, I love that moment too, where <laughs> she was talking about her former medical history yeah, while she's driving around with him. Uh, <laughs> and by the end, he just says to her, shouldn't you be driving? <laughs> um, also, there's some great moments in the film. Like, for example, they had some flashback moments uh, from his previous films, such as Smoking the Bandit and Deliverance. So it's like you see his older self um, you know, talking to his younger self. Of the characters he played, you know, like Vic, yeah, you know, from Smokey and the Bandit, and yeah, they're just going around in that particular scene, and then, and then there's another scene with uh, the movie Deliverance. You know, he plays his character, you know, just, uh, you know, just fishing by, you know, using an arrow. So I, I love that. I mean, it it seemed like a, a perfect homage to. Um, to Burt Reynolds and his career, yet alone his memorable films. The only thing I could have wished, though, that they could have done for this was they could have showed a flashback scene to uh, the movie The Longest Yard, because that was also his best role, too, <clears throat> without a doubt. You know, when they went to the stadium scene, yeah, I was expecting to see that, but it wasn't there. But that's okay. And this is also Burt Reynolds' uh, best work so far. Uh, he did a very good job, you know, 
basically playing himself, but with a different name. Yeah, so really enjoyed it. So he really uh, nailed it perfectly. And yeah, considering that, yes, he is old. And it's not half the man he used to be, but nevertheless, he's very good. Uh, Ariel Winter, um, this was a different role from her after her role in the TV series uh, Modern Family. Yeah, I mean, she now becomes more busty than ever before. Yeah, she's, she's getting really, uh, yeah, she is getting uh, pretty hot at this point. <laughs> And but she's still beautiful. She really is. Um, but hey, it, it was a tough role that she had to take, and I think she really nailed it completely. I mean, sometimes people can't handle unlikable characters, and that's always the case. But that's how she had the player. But I thought she did a great job, nevertheless. Uh, Clark Duke. I mean, it's great to see him again. I haven't seen him. Since all these uh, movies he's done, like for example, um, like Kick Ass and Hot Tub Time Machine, come to mind. Uh, but it's, it's great to see him again. Uh, it's also great to see Chevy Chase again too, uh, playing his best friend, the uh, Sony. So he was good. He was only there for just um, like quarters of the film. Like he's only there for like you know first, uh, middle, and in the end, um, has a great cast to uh, for the part. Um, it was also great to see Nikki Blonsky again because I haven't seen her since uh, the movie uh, Hairspray, and I think that other film that she did on Lifetime. Um, it's been a long time, but, but anyway, she plays Faith Cole. Uh, she was in the film festival along with the rest of the fans and everyone else joining in. Uh, so, a lot of great moments here. Um, there's also a touching moment right there where he actually sings to a wedding couple inside the luxury hotel and, you know, just when he was, he just passed out, uh, he was offering uh, Lil to, to give him a drink of water. But then a lot of uh, people came by and, and they, they even saw him wanted him to give him an autograph and everything. So it, it was a nice moment and he was like joking around and everything. So, yeah, I mean. so um, Adam Ricken did a great job uh, writing and directing this movie and it really shows I mean, how he can definitely come up with something. And considering that Burt Reynolds is his favorite actor, I mean, he wants to do an iconic uh, legend, as we all know. I mean, I, I know Burt Reynolds has uh, gone through a lot of things, too, in, in his career. And, I mean, especially when all of his films get a lot of negative reviews. I mean, hey, I know, I mean, nobody's perfect. I understand. He doesn't always agree with them, either. I mean, he's al he always had a hard time with uh, Cisco and Eber, too, when, when they started giving bad reviews to his films. Um, that sort of thing. I always love Burt Reynolds, though. I always have. I mean, he's a great actor. He's always been, no matter what movies he has chose. I actually did enjoy films like Smokey and the Bandit, uh, the Cannibal Run films, except for the third movie. You get the idea, because he wasn't in it. And um, I definitely enjoy his uh, voice acting in the film All Dogs Go to Heaven, and so on and so forth. I mean, even The Longest Yard. I even enjoy the remake too with with Adam Sandler playing his role. <laughs> so, I mean, and of course he's been in films like Boogie Nights and all of that. I mean, it just proves how much of a how much of a legend uh, Burt Reynolds is. But he's a nice guy. He really is. Deep down it. And I'm glad Adam Rickon did a great job. So uh, It is on Blu-ray now. It just came out uh, on March 27th. Even when they were playing this movie on demand on DirecTV Cinema. Yeah, they're part of that. And A24 uh, released the film. 
uh, Lionsgate uh, now has the, the Blu-ray for that. So, um, by any chance, uh, check the movie out. Uh, you'll definitely love it, especially if you're a Burt Reynolds fan. Yeah. And hopefully, I'll pick it up someday too, if if I can find it in stores. So, who knows? So anyway, uh, that's uh, that's the movie, the last movie star, and I give the film uh, four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.